All right. In this video, we're going to go post blog. So in other words, you've turned in any blog requirements for the class, and now you're moving on to a website that serves your purpose. Probably 90% of the time, that's going to be making a portfolio website. So the big thing that we need to address is, do you even need a blog at this point? Um, if it's a passion website where you are making a website on how to do something or giving advice on something, then a blog could be very appropriate to that site. But if it's a portfolio site, I would say like 97% of the time you don't need a blog um, and don't want a blog. In fact, let's put it this way, unless you have a very specific purpose for a blog on a portfolio website, just don't put one on there. The last thing you want to do is confuse a potential employer into, oh, what's this? Click on this and then there's a bunch of test stuff on there or, you know, about the only situation where it makes sense to have a blog on a portfolio site is if you are so passionate let's take graphic design for example you're so passionate about graphic design that you say I'm going to blog on a regular basis by showing work that I found that I think is great and show process of, of work that I'm working on and stuff like that and again it's it's regularly updated it's categorized it's professional it belongs with your portfolio site anything short of super professional just get rid of the blog you can always make another site um, even if it's for graphic design blogging and then just keep your portfolio site super logical another thing get rid of anything on your other pages that hints of blogs like likes and dislikes and, and maybe even sharing so let's take a look at what I'm talking about there you go um, and not necessarily at the bottom but in most cases it's at the bottom and you see a button like this you know be the first to like does it make sense for someone to like a page now to like a blog post certainly makes sense right but a page do you want people liking or or even worse disliking your portfolio page so I usually say get rid of this um, sharing you have to decide whether that makes sense for you so how do we get rid of these things what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your dashboard you're gonna go under um, settings and then under settings is sharing and then inside of sharing you're gonna go down and you're gonna look for something like this where you have the option to control um, so let's see this would be D D D D D oh right here turned on per post so not all the time so you click that you go down you hit save changes and then if we go back to our page and we refresh you can see that gets rid of the like now if you want to get rid of these as well go back and this may take some experimenting but you look here and you see okay the button you're you know you're in the information about the button starting here these are all the different ones you can add and you can just drag more here if you want them but if you want less or you don't want them on your pages then you look for something to that effect and I'll uncheck pages here and then I'll click save changes at the bottom wait for that to update go back to this page and refresh and then you can see it's much cleaner and something you may have noticed that when you first go to your website um, I have a home button which you'd expect it to go to first right but it's actually inside of the blog so what if you don't want that is another one that is under settings in this case under reading and right there it says your home page displays your latest posts so we'll change that to a static page and then we select which page we want and in this case it would be the home page and the post page um, you should update that to whatever you named it most likely blog and then at the bottom you should have a save changes we'll take a look at that we can test that by just putting in our URL again and you can see now it goes to the home page and if we want to go to the blog then we go to the blog 
And what if you don't want a blog at all? Well, we basically already covered that. You would just go into the menu and remove that from the menu, which is under Appearance. And then Menus. And then we're just simply going to go to Blog and Remove. And then Save Menu. No more Blog on the menu. And it's beginning to look more and more like just a regular website. A note here, if you ever take your blog off and you want to put it back on the menu, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, like sometimes it disappears from here, so you can't just add it back. So what I had to do in this case was I went into settings and then went back to, uh, to reading under here, turned it back to latest post, then it showed back. Uh, so just keep in mind that you may have to experiment a little bit if you do that, but probably in your case, when you remove the blog, you will be happy to just remove the blog and never need it again. Another common task is how to add a video to a page or to a post. Uh, basically, on the free version, you can't add your own video and host it, but you can easily put your own video on YouTube and the key thing is, and then you just paste the link. You don't use the link options. In other words, you don't tell WordPress that it's a link. You just paste the link there and it works perfect. So let's look at an example of that. Okay, so I'll say that on my home page, I want to add a video. And basically, all you need to know about this is it's just like adding a paragraph to a page. So let's say we want it right after this one. Just going to get our cursor in there. We're going to hit return. Then we're going to find the video that we want to use. Let's find a video about um, WordPress that's not mine, uh, just to show you that you can put your own content in there. You can copy somebody else's, but I'm just going to copy the link right here or the URL. Command C, go back to my page in edit mode. Command V paste that in there and you can see it recognized it right away. I'll hit update to update the page. Now I'll go to my actual home page, refresh it, and you can see there is the video embedded. Get the basics of web design, like if you need more hierarchy or push-pull between different hierarchy, um, that you can edit all of that stuff and it's super easy now with this editor. You don't have to go into, you know, HTML. You can just select the text. Let's say we wanted to make this a little bit bigger. Um, just remember that not everything shows up right here. Some of it shows up over here. So it says font size, default size. Well, what if we want to make that uh, a little bit bigger so we can go to medium size with that. Um, and what if we have uh, multiple rows of text and we feel like it's too close together? That's what line height is. And on a website, you always want uh, quite a bit of distance between your type. So like 1.4, 1.5 is about the minimum. I would consider too much and it'll look like the lines of type don't have anything to do with each other. If you're really you know, nitpicky about your site and want absolute perfection, you can change what is called the permalinks. Like right now, they all make pretty good sense. Um, this one says painting after here. This one says contact, but photography says my photography. So maybe at one time, that's what we called it. And then we realize, oh, even though I changed the name, it didn't change with this. Not a problem. You're just gonna go back into your dashboard.
You're going to go into pages, all pages. You're going to find the one that you want to change, which I believe was photography. And you can do it under the um, quick edit right here. They call it slug. And you can also do it under the full edit. So let's see, let's click away, click back, go to edit. And when you're in full edit mode, it shows up way over on the right hand side under permalink. Go down here and oh, it wasn't paintings, it was photography. Sorry. Uh, photography edit. And then we'll just change the URL slug to photography. Click on update. Check the live website once it updates. And then when we click on paintings, paintings, when we click on photography, it's just photography instead of my photography. If you really want to get good with WordPress, look through all of the menu options over on the left hand side in the in the panel. Um, so the, the, here's just some of the things that you know I I put in here if you want to read through them real quick that you can change but again here's what I'm talking about is when we're over here under just the basic admin this is probably the richest area here under settings so just go through these things one at a time scroll down um, you can you know try to change something write down what you change just in case something goes wrong but a lot of interesting things that you can change and make it you know, more customizable to what you're doing. Uh, the other thing that's very important to remember, especially for portfolio sites, is you eventually need to come up with a system for your images so that you don't have the famous ugly bouncing images. So when someone goes to look at your portfolio, you want it so that when they get into the gallery, which usually happens by clicking on one of the images, that the image size is not bouncing all over the place. So it has a nice flow to it. So you'll see that my images either max out by touching the top, an imaginary top and a bottom, because you don't want them all the way up here, and uh, an imaginary side so that there's a nice consistency you'll have to do some experimenting to figure out what that is for me but I'll, I'll tell you what mine is if, you, if you've taken my other classes you already know um, all of my images either hit 1600 wide or 1200 tall so in other words if the image is very tall it's most likely going to hit 1200 pixels tall and then be something less than 1600 wide if the image is clearly wider than it is tall like this one then it's going to hit 1600 pixels wide and be something less than 1200 pixels tall and if you want more information on how I do that um, and basically it's how you do it if you if you turn something in and I put it on my website it's gonna fit in there but you can go to the Prof Steve G website go to let me just hit escape to get out of here go to instructional videos and go to turn in files this second and third one will show you how to take anything that you've made in illustrator and make it to that fit inside that area the one down near the bottom called photoshop Pro project or image to website shows you how to take an image that you shot with your camera for example and make it fit within the certain web size that you come up with. Um, and then this is one for combining images in Photoshop where you want an image to look like uh, or multiple images to look like one image or become one image with maybe just like a white or a black border in between. That's a second video on the same topic. So continue experimenting with themes and image size and all that stuff and eventually you'll have a professional looking website.